Hi, I'm Charlie, and this uh, FPP short. Today we're going to be looking at a really cool tool inside of X-Lights to upload sequences directly to our Pixel controllers. This is going to work with a lot of different types of controllers, the mainstream ones out there on the market. So here we go. Uploading a sequence or even 20 between X-Lights and FPP is easier than ever. With FPP Connect, a tool inside of X-Lights, you can actually select what sequences or what controllers you want to upload to, and it makes it super, super simple. Here we are in X-Lights. I have a quick little layout done here, just a couple stars, a couple fun things. And I'm going to hop into the controllers tab here. I got my controllers set up. I got my ports assigned, all that good stuff here. And I also have a sequence that I want to play. And I also have a sequence here that I'm ready to upload. So first thing I want to do is make sure that everything's saved. I'm going to click Control S here and save. Go under Tools. And then I'm just going to do a batch render quick. So we're going to just upload two sequences. Make sure that they're both up to date here. Click OK. Usually the batch render tool, it'll find kind of any sequences inside of your x show folder. And so after that's all done rendering here, we're going to click on Tools and then go to FPP Connect. And so this is kind of the magic sauce to making all this happen. This will pretty much configure your controllers and kind of get everything sent from x up to your controller with most Falcon controllers, Culp, Microsoft, the Wally's controllers, most of them are going to work with this pretty seamlessly, especially if they use like a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone or something. This should pretty much work if they're running FPP. Going kind of left to right here, you'll have a list of your controllers, the description of them, what mode they're in, the version that they're running. You'll also get the FSEQ type. That's pretty much the type of sequence file we want to upload with modern controllers. Really, all you're going to use is the V2 sparse or the standard V2, depending on what the controller is actually doing. Most controllers like Culp, Microsoft, Wally's, that use the single board computers like a BeagleBone or a Raspberry Pi, the V2 sparse is really all that you need. If it's being a master, you will need the V2, but there's also kind of another step to that. A lot of the times, a lot of us will use master controllers that will pretty much stream out to controllers like WLED or something like that that needs a constant stream of data. And that's when you'd want to make sure that you use the V2 FSEQ type. Pretty much the V2 sparse only uploads the data for that particular controller. The media option, that's if you want to upload the media down here, the actual song or if it's an MP4 possibly that goes along with it. Usually that's only going to be needed on your master or whichever one's actually going to be playing the audio. Models is kind of dependent on the controller that you have. Some controllers won't let you do this. However, for your master, you're going to probably want to upload all models. That should let test mode work and it kind of knows everything going on. But if you're doing standalone or it's, a, it's going to be a remote player, local is really all that you need there. UDP out is kind of interesting and pretty cool. E essentially enables x to upload the E131 or DDP channel outputs. If you run a master controller, you'll want this set to all, and that will kind of pre-configure your master for all your remotes. You can leave that to none. If you do proxies and you kind of use a tunnel to get to other FPP instances or other controllers on your network, you'd want to use proxied, but if you're using proxies, you probably aren't watching this video here. If you have a playlist created, if you're using some like X schedule before, you can upload it this way. And I personally do all my playlists and scheduling inside of FPP itself on my master. So I'm, I don't have anything available. Pixel hat cape, kind of self-explanatory. If you have a hat or cape on your controller or you're using like a virtual matrix, they'll actually show up here. You want to make sure that that's checked properly for your controller because then when it uploads the outputs to your controller, it'll actually upload it to the proper spot instead of the general output tab under the output setups. Below all that, we kind of have our search here to find 
our sequences and media. You can kind of, you have a couple of settings to play with here if you want to look in different folders, if you want to do only the current directory or recursive search, kind of up to you. Might help break out some noise that way if you have different like Christmas sequence folders or in a Halloween sequence folder, might help clear out some noise. One thing to know inside X lights, the right click is super powerful. So if you have 20, 30, 40 different sequences here and you only need to upload five, you can deselect all highlighted or you can clear selection. So don't ever underestimate the power of a right click. Now let's get this all kind of configured here. So my M4 controller, I'm gonna use that as the master for this example. So I wanna upload to it and I wanna upload the V2 since it's the master, kind of needs to know everything going on. I wanna click media cause it's gonna play audio as well. Under models, I wanna click all. Under UDP, I already pre-selected it from before, but we'll leave that to all. And I want it to play from the M4 Pi hat. So I want it to configure those outputs. And when I go down to my FPP zero here, that's my virtual matrix. I am going to make sure that is clicked to upload to it. The V2 sparse is all we need. It doesn't need to know the song. It doesn't need to know the MP3 song that's playing. So I'm going to leave that unchecked models. I'll just upload local models. FPP is kind of cool that it'll actually auto create models. Once the outputs are configured UDP out, it doesn't need to, that can stay UDP out that can stay at none. And I want this configured as a virtual matrix on that controller. And this is actually, this FPP sphere here is a different controller on my network. So I'm not even going to configure that at all. And I want to upload both of these sequences here. So I got those checked because I want to upload those. Here's the media that goes along with this sequence. And I am going to click upload. Okay, now that that's all done and uploaded, let's hop over to our FPP controllers to make sure everything uploaded properly here. Now that we're in our Pi Zero, which is run our virtual matrix here, we notice that we have a couple of sequences. And if we go to the input output setup and click on channel outputs, virtual matrixes live under other. We're going to look there, start channel at two. All this looks right. If you need to flip your matrix, if it's upside down, you can click the invert button or you can change the start channel with an X lights. So nothing to change here. If you want to test it, you could go into test mode now in display testing and give it a test. Quick shortcut back to your status page. It's just click on the logo in the upper left hand corner. We have our two sequences here. So since this is actually going to be a remote, we're going to click remote on this. Okay, it's switched over to remote mode. Now we're going to come to our M4 and we're getting a couple errors. One of which is cannot ping DDP channel data to 1.68. And the other one is UDP output sent data to myself disabling 1.94. Well, we are currently on 194. So this is a pretty simple issue to fix. Go to channel outputs here under the input output setup tab. And here's the M8 Microsybe controller. And that is actually offline right now. So that's why we're getting that cannot ping error. So we're gonna, just gonna deactivate that. And the M4 Pi here, that is the controller that we're looking at. So we're gonna deactivate that. We're gonna hit save. Wants to restart FPPD, let's do that quick. And while that's happening, we're gonna go back to our main status page by clicking on the FPP logo in the upper left-hand corner. And one more thing that we wanna do quick is we wanna go under status control and click on multi-sync since we're working with multiple controllers here. We just wanna go under settings and send multi-sync packets. Click restart FPPD. We're gonna go back to our status page and with any luck, we'll select a sequence and it should play on our M4 Pi, but also this FPP0 that's running the virtual matrix. As we can see, it is running. Awesome. Thanks for watching. And if you learned something, please give the video a like. If you want me to keep making these quick tip type of videos, 
let me know by giving me a subscribe or if there's something that you want me to cover, let me know down in the comments.